back. So I, I mainly do all the education as far as of handouts that I can give you today afterwards. So I'll go over those, um, but I'll start with an introduction.
North Kent Transfer Station up in Rockford, which has can take trash, transfers it to the landfill, as well as taking um, recycling, the recycling drop-off. We used to have a recycling drop-off in Kentwood. That one had to close. It was uh, not financially feasible as far as a large amount of recycling, but transportation costs, and we were getting about half of it contaminated with trash and dumping. So unfortunately, that one had to close down. But we do still have, we it's currently under construction over at the Wealthy Street location. There's a drop-off center there, and then we have our drop-off in Rockford. The If you look at this map with me, though, there are the main three facilities. One recycling center, the drop-off in Rockford, and then around the county, around Kent County, all those other marks on there, the maroonish colored marks, those are also landfills. So thinking about the waste hierarchy, landfilling is at the bottom. It should be the smallest amount, of, or the smallest, the least preferred option. And yet we have one open landfill, two other trash options in Kent County, all the surrounding counties, one recycling, and a drop-off. We need to change this pattern so that we can recycle more because there is a lot more to recycle. This is a picture of what a landfill looks like. Has anyone ever in the audience ever been to a landfill before? A couple head nods. Yeah, so we do at our landfill, we do have a residential drop off area, but you don't typically drive up to the working phase where it looks like that. The, um, that compactor that's on top of the trash, its job is purely to pack down that trash as much as possible every day so that we can fit as much trash as possible into our landfill. It weighs as much as six school buses if you were to stack them on top of each other. So that's a lot of weight. Packing it down, it's got huge spikes in its wheels, about a foot long spikes. It's pretty impressive. The ground literally, well, the trash, which is the ground at that point, it literally sinks down as it rolls over and kind of, it's like a sponge, it kind of comes right back up a little bit. So every day, filling it with trash, over a hundred trucks come in every day, cover it with dirt at the end of the day, and it continues on and on. This one has been open since the 1980s. Here is a question for you. First of all, I'll give you a, this, we'll, we'll set it up like this. University of Michigan's football stadium can hold, uh, I believe it was um, 170,000 people, a lot of people. Who's anyone been to University of Michigan Big House? It's a big one. 113,000. 113,000, okay, so I was, I was overestimating. I was getting too excited about the people. So it can hold that many people, 113,000 people. Are you a Michigan fan? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> then you might like this fact. It can hold, if we think of how much trash it can hold, the just what from Kent County makes. The University of Michigan football stadium, we would need two of them from football field to the top. We would need two of those to hold our trash for just one year. Now Van Andel Arena, right here in Grand Rapids, how many times do you think we would fill that? It's less than 10, thank goodness. It's smaller than the, the, the big house. How many times? Eight. A couple years ago it was eight. Now is nine. Unfortunately, we have increased our trash a little bit too. We often see that as the economy improves, which it was improving in 20, 2018, 2019. People were buying more but then you throw out more. So we went from eight times to nine times. So that's over 600,000 tons of trash just from Kent County in one year. In other words, back here, the landfill, that's just a little tiny snippet, a little picture from one day, one moment, but it would be enough to fill the Anandal Arena when you look at it for a whole year, nine times. I often share that fact with whoever I'm sitting next to at the arena. <laughs> they don't appreciate it as much as I do. I'm like, hey mom, mom, picture this with trash. <laughs> Nine times. She's like, I just wanna watch the concert or whatever we're watching. <laughs> 
Moving up that waste hierarchy just slightly, now we're at waste to energy, and this is our facility off of Market Street. It opened, or it started processing waste in, I believe it was 1991. So it hasn't been open as long as our current landfill in, in Byron Center, but it has processed the same amount of trash that is currently buried in the landfill. So it's helped us by saving space in the landfill. Everything that goes there to get burned is reduced 90% in size. So just the ashes are left over. And we get electricity. We don't want to default there though, because in a landfill, you're burying your resources. In the waste to energy facility, you're still burning away these resources, even though we get something better, energy. And, if, and we get enough energy to power about 11,000 homes on a consistent basis, so about the size of the city of Walker. So it's good, but we always want to look for that highest and best use. We also are able to recover the metals that are there and using a giant magnet. So we do have a, a, uh, a way to recover some of it. Unfortunately, anyone who puts trash or puts, um, doesn't sort out their recyclables and it ends up in their trash, if it goes here, it will be burned just like regular trash. Now, the cities that go there, uh, it, it runs at full capacity, so we can only process trash from Grand Rapids, East Grand Rapids, Granville, Walker, Wyoming, and Kentwood. You guys fall into that. So, your trash is going to waste of energy, which is good, but don't forget, the ashes still go to the landfill, a different cell at the landfill, a different area, and we always want to look for the highest and best use. And then my favorite, the recycling center. Now we'll get into all of these products, all these materials in front of me. And I do at the end, I have a second in here. Oh, there. A giant folder of resources for you. So if you, uh, Obviously, this recording will be on the YouTube channel, so that's a great resource, too. You can come back to look at the PowerPoint slides and hear what, uh, what the presentation says, but I have these documents, which I'll put out for everybody at the end. So, typically, this is also where most of the questions come in. The main things that we recycle, and then I'll open it up to questions about recycling after we go over the basics of it, specifics and whatnot. Some, there's always one that someone that has a very specific item that is always on your grocery list. We all like our, our habits, our, our same foods. So if we can figure out what needs to go where, we're on the right track. So we have five basic categories, paper and cardboard, since they both come from the same resource of trees, paper and cardboard are currently in the same category. Uh, plastics, metals, glass, and cartons. All of those items on there are single material items except for cartons. And by single material, I mean made from one item, like a paper. Paper is paper. Metal, metal can. If it's like a, um, a glass jar, a glass peanut butter jar with a metal lid, now that's a multi-material item, so separate them. The only exception is the carton because we are able to process those entirely separate from everything else, so it gets its own category. That'll come into, into play in the next slide. I have four key questions to ask yourself to help you figure out is something recyclable or not. Now, paper, some quick guidelines here. It has to be flat, or a box it needs to be flattened and empty. All of these categories need to be clean, or relatively clean, rinsed and empty. I often say no food residue or liquid actively falling out of it. If it has some, some food residue caked in the creases of a can or something, that's okay. But um, another way to think about it, if you can't keep your recycling in your kitchen where you're gonna look at it and smell it for a week because it gets too smelly, it's not clean enough. You should be able to keep it there for probably about a week or longer if it's cleaner, but a week. If, if you can't make it that long, it's too smelly or it's too dirty. So paper boxes, cardboard boxes, always empty though because we don't do soft plastics like the packaging material, like air pillows that are now in boxes or styrofoam, any type of foam. So none of that can be in your 
curbside recycling. And what I mean by curbside recycling uh, is single stream. Uh, if you live at a single unit house, you roll your own curb out. I'm assuming here at, at Breton Village that you have a larger bin. Is that, or do you have curbs? Do you have bins on the halls? Usually I ask this ahead of time, but I forgot. They have trash rooms that they can separate things out. Perfect. So you do, as a, as a resident here, you do have to take it to your trash room and sort out, figure out what's trash, what's recycling. But um, so that's what I mean by single stream recycling. We don't take any of the soft plastics or grocery bags. Um, so that's one reminder. Flatten your boxes, get out all the packaging. When it comes to plastics, this segues right into that, bags, your soft bags and any of those soft plastics, those are allowed to go back to the grocery stores. They have recycling, usually recycling collections in the entry room or in the entry walkway area. It says recycle your bags here. A lot of bags, grocery bags, bread bags, air pillows. Um, sometimes they'll take bubble wrap. You'd have to check locally. But that's a different setup because the materials that we take at the Kent County facility, we take it because first of all, we can process it. We have the right machinery. And second, we have a location to send these items so that they be can become a new product. That's the end goal of recycling, to make something new and useful again that we can use and then recycle again, ideally. So only hard, rigid plastics, any number one through seven, just nothing soft or foamy. When it comes to glass, just make sure that any metal lids have come off and that you'll put your lids, they can still go in the bin if they're larger than uh, about two inches by two inches. Just put them both in but separated. And then same with metal. If it has paper on it, the expert recycler will remove that paper label and put both in. But the regular recycle, recycler is good too. You don't have to remove the paper. It won't harm the process. When it comes to cartons, leave the plastic cap on the carton. Uh, since it's a mixed material, everything can stay there. I forgot to say, with plastics, also keep the plastic cap on the plastic <laughs> bottle. Who can repeat all that? Just kidding, you don't have to because the same thing that's up there I tried to highlight most of that, so it is on this document, which I can have for you. I even have sp Spanish copies if you would prefer a Spanish version. And then uh, our website is also has this information as well. I'll get to the information that's on the back of this a little later, but it does have the map of where we send our recyclables to become new products. So you can trust that as you recycle these five basic materials through the Kent County Recycling Center, we do take it we, we have, our supervisor has visited these facilities. We know what's happening to it. So it's not going to China. It's not going to the landfill. We are truly recycling it. So that's a difference. Sometimes these national stories of what might be happening around the country get shared more locally. But this is our local story right here on the back. Here are the four key questions. And these, these always help me to break down when I find an unusual item. I just think through these four. First, is it an accepted material? As in, one of these five basic categories. If I had a chair, it's not paper. These chairs have maybe plastic, maybe metal, but you got a combination of two. So it has to be just one of these accepted categories. Or you have to disassemble it. But it's another story. Is it an acceptable size? Some of these questions will deal with the items at the bottom, as in, uh, well, I guess that's the next one, the shape more so, but is it an acceptable size? Think about what fits in your bin or the bins in your trash room. If it's smaller than about two inches by two inches, about like a bottle cap, an unattached bottle cap, that cannot be recycled. That's why we leave plastic caps on plastic bottles. So no smaller than about two inches by two inches, no larger than the top of the recycling container. So about two foot by two foot. A five gallon bucket would also be about the largest we can take. So is it one material that we accept? 
Is it the right size? Is it the right shape? So at the bottom of your guide, the three red or items here, nothing tangly and stringy, like Christmas tree lights, uh, which would fail the first two questions also. Nothing like clothing, also not one of our categories. No grocery bags, nothing bag, that all does have to be loose. Nothing hazardous, so a lot of the hazardous items, not necessarily shape related, but they could cause fires, batteries can cause fires, um, propane tanks are never fully empty, so we can actually have explosions, but is it the right size, is it the right shape, and is it empty and clean, which I already mentioned probably a couple times by this point, empty and clean. If it's really dirty, problem one, stinky kitchen, problem two, stinky recycling center, problem three, and I could probably go on, but contaminating other materials. So as your recycling gets dumped in with everyone else's recycling and then onto the tipping floor of the recycling center where we start processing it, especially if there's food or liquid still on it, it will definitely spill onto other items and can contaminate them or ruin them for recycling. It takes a lot to ruin a whole load, so don't stress if you see just one item in there that's bad or that's really contaminated. However, if we all start saying, oh, this one item, I'll just dump that in, it's fine. If we all think like that, then we have a problem. So leave that for the accidental mistake, not the wish cycling is what some people call it, because they're like, I hope this is recyclable. It's wish cycling, but we don't want to do that either. So those four questions should guide you to a pretty, uh, a pretty good understanding of what should or should not go in your recycling bin. Now, if you want to visit us, and I don't think, Patty, is there one scheduled yet? Do we have a tour scheduled for you guys? We just went there a couple months ago. Oh, oh, did anyone come a couple months ago with us? I knew it sounded familiar. <laughs> one of my neighbors did and brought, brought us those cards back, and that's very helpful. These, okay, perfect. Oh, good, so this is, ah, I, clear, I have been doing a lot of presentations and tours now that everything's back together. But yes, so we do have tours and open hours. If you have your own transportation and want to come visit us, come on a Monday, any Monday, one to five. This is a picture of our bales. So this is our final product. And I didn't put all of our videos of how to sort everything at the facility there. Um, but if you're going to YouTube to rewatch this, Kent County has a YouTube channel as well for Reimagine Trash. So that is a great place. We've got some videos that show how the recycling process actually happens. It's a lot of machines, a lot of workers, and so people are actually touching it. That, so that, that's important to remember too. But by the end, we end up with these one-ton bales of like materials. So all the papers here, pop cans, and the beverage containers are there. We get the low-grade aluminum. We're expecting lots of that with Thanksgiving, like pie tins, lasagna trays, uh, aluminum foil as long as it's clean then you can ball it up into about a baseball size because our because our workers do pick that out by hand so that's our final product come visit us on open hours this is like a little commercial break here I could do a little I should come up with a little jingle for next time right a little commercial break make sure you're all awake but I love having visitors if you have grandkids that would love to see the facility. It's a great time for them too, and we always have a reused craft available. That's cool. This is the, a closer view of the map that of where everything goes, which I referenced as I showed you the guide a little while ago, just a minute ago. And just remember, that's what we're aiming for, not just, well, every part of the recycling process is important. Think of that recycling triangle the fact that we make an item and then you use it and you recycle it, but then, or you put it in the recycling bin and we sort it, but then it has to be made into something new, the third corner of recycling, and then it's purchased again and you use it and then make it into something new. So all three parts of that are crucial to the recycling triangle continuing that cycle. So that's why we like to highlight this so that you can trust the process so that you can understand that not only do your part as a recycler, but also 
if you see a lot more things are putting on their packaging that we now use recycled paper in this or 50% recycled content, 80%, whatever it might be. If you start looking for those things in the grocery store on all your products, it will increase your grocery shopping trip length of time by a lot <laughs> if you want more to do when you're grocery shopping. But I also find it very interesting to read labels like that. So thinking back now uh, to what the county does, and then we'll get to the question time. We have our landfill in Byron Center. We have the waste to energy. We have our recycling center. Unfortunately, with over 600,000 tons of trash and only about 35,000 tons of recycling on an annual basis, we still have at least $28 million worth of resources that are ending up buried in our landfill. And a lot of that could be recycled. So it's not necessarily that people are purposefully throwing these things away as a resource, but some people don't know what to recycle correctly. It can be confusing, unfortunately. Uh, you get wish cycling, where the wrong thing ends up in the recycling, or vice versa. So all these issues are going on, but how can we make sure we're recovering more of that? Part of it is learning how to be a better recycler, uh, awareness. Part of it is the value to these items. If you look at that pie chart there, $28 million, over a million dollars worth of pop cans from our 10 cent deposit, our, our bottle bill, still end up in the landfill every year. Yeah, who wants to be a millionaire here? Or we could, let's give it to Patty. I always say, give it to the organizer, whoever <laughs> is the organizer. They deserve the millionaire. If only yes. I could just hand out millions of dollars. <laughs> the landfill could, possibly. So that's something that to be aware of, that these materials that you're about to put in the trash can, if there's a market for it, somewhere that wants it, that can make it into something useful, it does have value. And the pop cans and such, if only we had someone standing at the beginning of the landfill like, to sort through all of our trash, but that's a, that's a very different process. So it best, if only we can all sort it ourselves, but one day, one day maybe we can recover all of this from our landfill by sorting it out. Separate organics, or separate out recycling and trash. The O can be for organics, like composting, or just out. But that's what we're trying to do is, yes, landfill and trash, it's easy. We definitely need trash cans. We don't wanna just dump it into, onto the side of the roads and pollute, pollute our beautiful world. We gotta make sure it gets somewhere but that highest and best use, thinking about that waste hierarchy, recycling, composting, moving towards a circular economy. So if you used to be in the, in the business world, this is what the, all the business owners are starting to talk about, thinking about this circular economy, because even any trash that a business makes, that any of us makes, you bought something to make that trash. I like to think of candy because of Halloween. So all the candy we bought, is, I bought candy, but half of what you bought or a portion of what you bought is now trash, the wrapper. I literally bought that to eat the candy, use that wrapper for a second, and now toss it out. So my money for the trash. But if I can, I don't know how I'd reuse a candy wrapper, but if I could loop it back into the system, now we have no trash and we're reusing what we already have in this circular economy. So that's where we're hopefully headed Instead of having one of our legs be a landfill, we'll hopefully have a sustainable business park. And we're actually working on that south of Kent County's landfill uh, in the Byron Center, Allegan County area. And I do have more information on that if you're interested in that. But for right now, whoops, no. oh, there we go. For right now, I do want to open it up to questions about any type of waste as, as well as recycling. I have our guides. I have our hazardous waste handouts about safe chem for household hazardous waste. I have handouts on sharps and meds, if you have old medications or needles, 
like if you're a diabetic, we've got those options as well as my business card up here. So I'll put these um, I'll put these on, on chairs over here. That way, if you need to take off, you can come over and grab the paper and head out. But I'll also open it up to questions. Um, Patty, should we use a mic for the questions, or do you want to? You may repeat the question. I'll repeat the yeah. Thanks. I can repeat the question. Yes, right there. In the, yes. Uh, just recently, my toaster oven conked out on me, and I threw it in the trash. But I had misgivings about it because I thought, hey, there's probably copper in that wire. Copper is such a commodity these days. I, you know, was that the right thing to put in the trash? It's not the best. So the oh, sorry, I'll repeat the question. The question was, uh, she recently threw her toaster oven in the trash. She had thoughts about it, but wasn't sure what to do about it, so it tossed in the trash. It's it's not the best option. It's all right, um, but yes, there probably was copper in the wires. There's, uh, anytime you have an electronic of any sort, there's definitely recoverable and recyclable materials in there. So at North Kent Transfer Station up in Rockford or South Kent Landfill, we do actually have electronics recycling programs and collections. Uh, anytime that the landfill and the transfer station are open, you can drop it off there. The only electronics that we currently charge for are box TVs and the old box computers, like with CRT, uh, the cathode ray tubes in them. Because that has, the cathode ray tube has mercury, so it's a lot more difficult to safely dispose of that. So next time, electronics recycling. Yes? Is it enough to cut off the electrical cord and then you'd put the cord in the trash only or vice versa or any part? Yeah, the best option would just be bring the whole container um, or the whole item with you because the, the electrical cord will have something but in the case of like a toaster oven, microwave, there, there are always wires within. I visited uh, Compreneu, which is one of the local electronics recycling organizations, and if you want to volunteer there, commercial break, not for Kent County now, but Compreneu, they actually allow volunteers to come in and you get to disassemble things like old computers and electronics, and I learned a lot just in like half an hour of pulling things apart, but there's a lot to recover and that's how they do it for electronics recycling. So bring the whole thing. And you had another question? Yeah. Yes, so the question about the bottle bill, the 10 cent bottle bill, um, some stores don't take all those items back. All the, I believe it's mostly carbonated be beverages. So they are acceptable in your regular curbside bin. You just don't get your 10 cents back for it. And, and kind of like what you said, I don't drink a lot of pop or uh, in, buy my own beverages for at home. Um, so if I ever get one, it might be from the vending machine or I'm at a friend's house and I'll have a, I'll get a, a metal can. Then I can either put it in the regular recycling bin, it'll come to the Kent County Recycling Center then, it still gets recycled, I just don't get 10 cents. Or if I give it to someone else and they take it back. But um, the worst would be when it ends up in the landfill. So you try to recycle it, the store doesn't take it back. I don't know if they have recycle bins right there. Usually then they just have a trash bag for your sticky stuff. So uh, if you're able to at least get it to any recycle bin, it will still get recycled. Most of your 10 cent return bottles and cans, they go to shoe pan recycling. So they actually skip our facility and go straight to shoe pan who recycles the plastics, metals, and glass. 
Chupan is right, um, they have three locations in Michigan. One is right here in Grand Rapids. Yep, so the stores, it's um, MLive just released a 10 minute documentary about the bottle bill actually. Uh, so you could, I'm sure if you Googled the MLive documentary about 10 cent cans, but it's, it's really a good representation of the process and what happens. Yes? Like a lotion container? Yeah. So if I have a lotion container, I should really bring a sample because that's a common one. Any lotion that has this little squirt pump on the top, the top part, the pump, is not recyclable. So remove that pump, you can throw that away, and then the plastic base is recyclable. The pump has a metal spring and other pieces to it, so it is a difficult item, so it's not recyclable. Another unusual item that I always kind of thought was recyclable, but is actually not because it's multiple materials, is um, an example would be a Pringles can. The tubes of Pringles, or if it's a peanuts container, it has the plastic lid or top part. The, the cylinder part is actually paperboard, but with a metal liner. If it was just a paperboard tube, then I'd be okay with it. It'd be great, recycle it but it has that metal liner on attached, like melted to it, so we can't recycle that anymore. Plus you'd have to remove the metal base off of it to disassemble those three pieces to be recyclable. Yes? Two questions, how about aerosol paint cans? Yes, aerosol paint cans, what do you do with those? Uh, if a spray paint can or aerosol can is totally empty, like you shake it, nothing's there, you've sprayed it and the last of it's come out, then those are actually recyclable. There's no chemical left in it. You can put it in the recycle bin. If there's anything left in it, you can take it to our Safe Chem Household Hazardous Waste Program. And these are the current locations and drop-offs starting sometime in 2022. We actually have a new Safe Chem drive-through facility starting. Well, they're all kind of drive-through, but just not covered drive-through. So the new one will be by the recycling center. And with that, at some point in 2022, we just don't have a, an open date yet, it'll have a reuse center. So if there is a brand new spray paint canister that's dropped off or um, grout filler or pesticide or herbicide, we now will have a reuse option. Thinking back to that waste hierarchy, reuse is at the top. So I'm excited about that for little household projects and stuff. But yes, household hazardous waste. And I have this for you if you want it. What about batteries for power tools that are no longer rechargeable? The pa batteries, especially the rechargeable ones that aren't rechargeable anymore, any lithium ion, uh, those can all come to, again, our Household Hazardous Waste Program. If it is an alkaline battery, that's the one exception. Any AA, AAA, those alkalines, those are now actually safe to dispose of in your garbage. There's no hazardous material in there, so they've been regulated as safe for trash. The, there's still metal, a small amount of metal, it's just very hard to recover it. So alkalines are trash. There is, um, There are a couple places for a fee that you can drop them off if you really want to recycle them, but it's kind of a hefty fee. Uh, but otherwise trash for those. Hazardous waste for the others. I'll bring this right over to you. Yes, that can go up there too. Yep. Other questions? Yes? Oh, your glass bottles, jars, and so do you have a glass crushing machine? Yes. Do What, what happens with the glass bottles and jars and such? We do have a glass crushing machine. Yes. As all of this comes in, the tipping floor, it actually looks like quite a mess to the untrained eye, but hopefully, it's just recyclables, no actual trash in there. But as it goes through, the first section is our pre-sort workers. So they pull off garbage or things that shouldn't be there. Then we have a cardboard screen for the large pieces of cardboard. And then the glass breaker is next. So it's very early on that as everything goes over 
uh, off of the conveyor belts, it hits these metal discs, and uh, as they spin, it hits with enough force that the glass breaks, falls through a small filter, and then is in our glass pile. So glass is the one exception to our bales in that one image that I showed for the PowerPoint. Everything else gets baled together, but broken glass does not. It has to be transported on a truck, just loose. Yes? And what do they do with broken glass? Yes, great question. What happens next with the broken glass? It will go to, we use a company called Strategic Materials in Wisconsin, Chicago, Wisconsin and Illinois are the, their two current locations. So they take that broken glass and they will, um, all of our items, we don't actually clean them or purify them at, at our recycling center. It's just sorting them according to material type. So one of the first things that all of these facilities will be to get it into a, um, a state where it's clean and processed enough to be purified. So they have to make sure that any shredded paper and plastic caps are all sorted out, clean that glass, and then it ends up getting melted into new glass products. Another item, so most of the glass, the best use for recycled glass will be to recycle it into another pure glass product. If it's less pure or, they, or there's some contamination in a load, then it might end up as glass countertops. You can, sometimes you can see, you can purchase recycled glass countertops and it actually looks like shredded or crushed up glass. Fiberglass insulation can also be made from recycled glass. So those are some of the options for that. Anything else? Oh yeah. Yes, paper products like cardboard, cardboard's a great item because it's very high quality fiber. Um, all the fiber items have about a life cycle of five to seven times of, before the fibers shrink down so that then it's like shredded paper or toilet paper, napkins, any of that low grade paper. Even wrapping paper, we do not want wrapping paper in the recycle bins as that comes this, this Christmas holiday season. Um, because it's very low grade paper, sometimes there's things added into it, including clay sometimes for the designs, but most of that paper, it will slowly go from very high level cardboard, white office paper, down to like magazines and newspaper, then down to the toilet paper and tissues, and then compost, grow more trees, and start over again. So uh, cardboard, Definitely, well, I like to reuse cardboard boxes also as much as possible, but um, it will, ideally, cardboard can go into more cardboard boxes. Mm -hmm. Can we buy magazines? Yes. Yes, yes, magazines. Uh, one, one test that I do for papers, the only papers that we would say no to, honestly, anything like paper, kitchen products like paper plates that have food on it now or napkins or tissues. So none of that, that all has to go to trash. The, you can do a tear test. So if I were to tear this, it would, first of all, I could tear it easily. Even though it's a thicker paper or magazines, if they're really shiny, I can still tear it. If it either doesn't tear or starts to tear, but there's a plastic film cover on it, that is no longer just paper, so now you cannot recycle that. Usually you can tell, usually it's like a heavier material then. And then there's a category between those, we call it paperboard, like cereal boxes. So after cardboard boxes, then it's got the paperboard and then paper. But all of that is recyclable. Even your envelopes with the small plastic windows, that's an expert recycler would remove that plastic window and throw it out, but it's a small enough amount that you can actually leave the plastic window. That's okay. What's the answer to the big fields and areas of the trash islands in the ocean? That is a good, a big question for sure. I think the, the immediate answer for all of us right here is to take 
your own responsibility of your own waste, making sure that it is getting to the correct bin um, and the best use, if possible, not sending it to the landfill, but making sure that it's not litter either. A lot of that from the oceans, well, anything that gets into our rivers and streams, then goes into the lakes, gets into the oceans, you also get it from, as all the ships go back and forth, uh, big freighters and such, they can, they do lose things overboard. So that will end up happening. Little microbead plastics, unfortunately those end up there from our water, sometimes from our beauty products, um, sometimes from even washing our clothes. A lot of our clothes have plastic in them, polyester, and so the, those little beads of plastic eventually come off of that. Tires have your little rubber, the, it gives you traction, but they eventually, when your tire is bald, all those little beaded parts on your tire, the little things that stick off, they've now worn off into the environment. So all of these little things add up, but I think the biggest thing that we can do is to make sure that your own personal waste is not getting polluted. Um, then you could look at some of your maybe beauty habits and products. What do they degrade into in our water stream? Otherwise, it's a bigger issue between countries and figuring out the out the cleanup stuff. Yes, <laughs> I don't. I think right now I, I'm not aware of much reclaiming that's happening. There are a few organizations that actually go and are always cleaning up beaches, and so more expensive shirts and clothing are out there, but they're made from recycled beach plastic or ocean plastic. I think actually there is a shampoo bottle by, I want to say by Dove, or one of the more the bigger brands out there, but it's from some percentage reclaimed ocean plastics. So they're slowly starting to capture some of this and reuse it into plastic recycling, but it's always easiest to try to prevent that pollution in the first place. Yes, plastic pill bottles like the orange ones and any type of plastic pill bottle, we do take those. Those are, they might be right on the size margin, but go ahead and put them in. Usually they do end up correctly recycled. The, um, the plastic cap on the plastic bottle, even if they're different colors, that's okay. Um, just make sure that you don't leave your own prescription information on it. Either pull that sticker part off or black it out just for personal safety, uh, information safety and make sure they're empty. If you need the where to dispose of old medications, we do have that again. Most of the time, it's you take it to a police station. They will take controlled and non-controlled substances at police stations. And if this gets played later for anybody on YouTube, they can go to reimaginetrash.org and we have a contact us button. Or any, I mean, anyone here can, of course, contact me through that too. But so for anyone listening, re